now by Aisha Omar. She is a senior lecturer in political theory at the University of Witwatersrand in Johannesburg. Thank you so much for being with us on the program. Uh, so looking at the initial uh, preliminary results, may I say, coming into us, what are your uh, thoughts moving forward into the weekend where we're officially going to get uh, the results of who the next uh, leader of South Africa is going to be? Um, so, so good morning and thank you very much for having me on your show this morning. Um, it's, um, it's a really interesting picture that is emerging out of South Africa as we are seeing um, the first set of results emerging um, um, in relation to, to the, the vote count. Um, yesterday was, was quite an interesting day, as you know, um, with some logistical difficulties initially. Uh, but, but over, by and large, the IEC was able to, um, to conduct um, a free and fair election um, that, that, that ran quite smoothly. Um, I think what, what I want to just focus on is la the latest pro projections by the Council for Sci Scientific um, and Industrial Research um, in South Africa, which is showing that with about 12% of um, votes being counted uh, or the uh, voting uh, districts being declared, they are predicting a model which projects the ANC at around 41%. Um, the biggest opposition party, the DA, at around 21%, um, and then the EFF um, at around 8.98%. And these are these are quite staggering, I think, for a variety of reasons, uh, but but largely because um, the, the the strong performance of um, of some opposition parties, in particular, for example, um, Jacob Zuma's MK party. Um, for a first time show mm -hmm. um, it, it has really sort of I think upset the balance for the, for the ANC. Right and going into the vote there was uh, a lot of pessimism when it came to um, you know people going out into the polls and actually casting their ballots and I, I believe that the turnout is much higher than um, than expected so what does that tell us about South Africans and their right to cast their ballots and not give up their hard-earned right to exercise their democracy in voting. So I think there's several key things here. And the first is, of course, South Africa comes from a long and tumultuous history and enduring legacy of um, colonialism and apartheid. And as you mentioned, you know, liberation was hard won. So South Africans take the vote and its democratic and civic participation quite seriously. But but there has been a um, general downward trend in terms of voter participation in every election since 1994. Um, and questions of turnout have always uh, been related to general voter apathy, but also um, just a uh, a disillusionment with the economic and political situation and, 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 and a decline in general in, in civic participation. But in this election, we've seen something quite different emerge. Um, turnout yesterday was 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 quite, in some levels, at some level rather unprecedented. Uh, you had across um, South Africa, um, after 9 p.m., voting stations teeming with people and queues long um, you know, sort of snaking around, uh, you know, corners w for people trying to get into the voting stations and the IEC then allow mm. people who are queuing to continue queuing some also into the early hours of the morning. So this, I think, has been has been quite, um, quite important for this election to show that we've reached a point of um, maturation um, in, in South Africa's democracy in the sense that there's... Um, right. You know, 30 years on, there's still this 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 keen interest to 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 play a part in in, in voting for um for 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 your democratic aspirations. Indeed, Aisha Omar, thank you so much for being with us here on the News Hour. It was a pleasure speaking to you.